Increasing human population within Lake Victoria Basin has led to increase in food demand which has put pressure on agricultural production that has necessitated increase of use of chemical fertilizers. These and more nitrogen chemicals, if washed down to the lake, result in eutrophication leading to blooming and sequential growth of aquatic weeds. One of them is the water hyacinth. Water hyacinth control is difficult. High nutrient levels in water due to population make it hardest to remove from water bodies. Lake Victoria is losing its beauty, navigation and fresh fish stock due to the presence of water hyacinth in some of its bays and gulfs. Various people are disappointed about the state of the lake. The Inter-University Council of East Africa through Lake Victoria Research Initiative, VICRES, funded a project to study the use of water hyacinth as fertilizer for farmers. Other alternative ways of using the water hyacinth for crafts and other items are being explored by various communities around Lake Victoria. Intergovernment, regional and local efforts are being engaged to contain the water hyacinth. In Uganda, an interministerial approach is used. I have come to, uh, uh, to Kenya to actually to work for six weeks as a rotary doctor. But as I flew in from Nairobi to, uh, uh, to Kisumu and I started to see the lake, and I looked down from the airplane and I saw these uh, floating things. I didn't know what it was. It looked like a delta. What is it? But now I, I realized that, that it was the water hyacinths. All, all the time that uh, I saw, and they were almost covering the lake. The sanitation has a lot to do with uh, how you, you keep your toilets, how you make your to toilets, where you put it, and how you build them so that it, it does not come down to the ground. Because if it comes to the ground, then the rain will come and uh, the rain will take the water into the rivers and that will float down. And that will be like, uh, like feeding the hyacinths. So I think it's very important that with hygiene, so that should start all the way up from the river, but I, I heard about the hyacinths before I came here, and, but I have never seen them, and then they said that uh, someone planted them here and they started to grow, so and I realized also that we get a lot of uh, nutrition, but that must come from bad hygiene. Yeah, 2008, the lake was very clear. Business was good. Uh, when you look at the hotel here side, the hotel was doing good business. Visitors were coming in, we can wash us. The cars were coming because the lake was clear. There was no, there was no this, this what I think. There was no what I think. And uh, even the boat riders, they were doing their business as usual. And as, as you see right now, the boats are stranded, they are out of the, the, out of the lake. As you see even Remy right now, since I came in the morning, I haven't even get a single car to wash.
Well, the only effort we have done was only last year when we had uh, a project, there was a project called Agul Environmental Management, which was financially funded by a certain NGO, but people were many, people were willing to pull out the weed manually, but around, after one month, there was no money, you see. So, as you see right now, somebody can, people cannot just come from nowhere, you see, and uh, decide to pull it out, because people will need to be paid, and uh, there's no any organization who just come out willingly, especially on financial basis finance this project so that it can be full but there are many people who are willing to pull it. The challenges that we face are many because the way it is right now the water is stagnant. We have uh, smelling especially when it comes to evening evening hours when the weather is cool there's a, an order coming from from the weeds because they've, they've rot. Just snakes are many, especially when it will go, there will be many, many snakes, especially the young ones. We've come here to Kisumu at the Longini Beach, and it's hard for you to tell people that this is a beach. You'd think it's a cultivation site that was abandoned after a long harvest. But this is the state of Lake Victoria here at Winamgao. It's so pathetic that the weed has choked the lake. And it's a shame for us as East Africans, really. Because this lake is a place where most of us derive our livelihood. It expands all the way to Tanzania and to Uganda. It's a place of fishery resources. It's a lake that modulates our climate in the region, and now here it is. It's true we have the, the water high scene, even in Uganda, but it's not yet come to this level. And I uh, would urge everybody to have a concerted effort to save the lake. We would like to have the, the, the citizens of Kisumu come, the government of Kenya, civil society organizations, to join hands and save the lake Victoria. I've been here in Kisumu in the past four years. The situation was not just like this, but now it is becoming worse. But more or less in Tanzania, we experience the same thing, and especially the, in the area where Musoma is, and also along the Lake Mara. We are facing this problem, and uh, we are trying to share the experience, what is happening everywhere, but seriously, efforts and initiatives have to be taken by every member of the society in East Africa to ensure that uh, we are going to, 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 to end the problem. Still in Kisumu, we see the lake and we can see the water. Much as it's not as clear as the lake used to be three years ago, there is hope that much as the, the water high seas here, it's not as bad as it appears at the Winam Gulf. So this is Dunga Beach, and you can see the rain coming over. There's a lot of wind, but also the water high seas is floating. So who knows, maybe tomorrow this beach could also be chopped and have a similar picture like the one at Winam Gulf. So all in all, much as we see some lake here, the water is there. But there's also a big presence of the water high sea. We are not safe either. It's still a challenge and we need to address the water high sea this portal. Regional integration now is the current focus um, within the EAC. Uh, we need to integrate, we need to work together, we need to develop the East African region together. That's why the motto of the East African community says that um, 
we are one people with a common destiny and it is integration that brings about the achievement of that one people and common destiny. Uh, working together and making contributions you know, towards the development of the region and through integration we will then be removing some barriers to development in the region. So I think uh, the research information we are generating will help to inform uh, that kind of process quite well. The research on uh, what I have seen is benefiting people in the, in the lake in terms of uh, more understanding has now been, you know, brought in relation to the ecology or the, the, the way the water has in, you know, thrives, how it uh, affects other, you know, life in the water, like fish, like, uh, and, like other plants, how it relates with the other plants, like now the hippo grass. It's clear now that sort of at one point it relates to the hippo grass before eventually it dies off and then it might either it, it sinks down to the the lake bed and then it has its own other consequences. And then the other thing is uh, the research on water hyacinth, you know, although providing avenues on alternative use of the water hyacinth, although it has also challenges that many uh, the different agencies or private institutions are becoming uh, starting to come up with ideas, NGOs, private entities, to see how they can use the water hyacinth for, for you know, craft, uh, energy in terms of uh, briquettes, as well as fertilizer, uh, and other things that are coming up. So the, the, the research is really definitely is useful in terms of opening up our minds, as well as the opportunities that the water hyacinth provides, as well as the challenges that the water has in us on our lives as well as for the communities. The striving had across the region, the local region, you know, switch all the way from Rwanda, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, to control the water has in. Manually you can see people on the some of the learning sites, people are pulling out the water has in within their limits. It's not an easy task, depending on where you are, because some of the water has in really grows up to a couple of feet, which means it is quite heavy. And note is also it's, it's contained, it's, it contains a lot of water, you know, in terms of quantities of water by uh, in its own content, and therefore it is heavy. In addition to being, you know, a habitat, of course, for some hazardous, uh, you know, snakes and and so on. So it is also it's a work that they're doing in terms of manual removal. But uh, other communities are also using it in terms of crafts. In Kisumu, uh, we have groups that are using the water hyacinth to make crafts. We used to have a community in uh, Rosilla here uh, that use, was making crafts out of uh, water hyacinth. And uh, I think groups, we have had also groups elsewhere that are trying to get the water hyacinth uh, to use it for energy uh, in terms of drying it. They, they bring it out of the water, they dry it, and then eventually they, do, they, they make it directly into cooking or they make you know, briquettes or small balls of for energy balls that they can use for cooking after carbonizing it. Um, so those are the the few that the communities are doing. But you know, they are also constrained by the available laws. Some of the partner states are yet to to uh, to to allow the water has in to be used in this sense. You know, classifying it as a noxious weed means it's like in the levels of. Uh, anything that is not allowed to be used in any way, but other way, but to be destroyed in short. So the, the, in a way, it sort of limits. The, so the East African Committee, in a way, has to come up, they, they, therefore, to pronounce itself on whether we go, you know, in the straight way, in terms of looking at the water hyacinth as a noxious weed and therefore no other thing, or we allow some sort of alternative views of the water hyacinth so that the community or the initiatives that are coming up are either supported uh, or they are allowed to, to proceed as, as, uh, as anticipated. During the time of, 19, of the, in the 1900s, 
that is especially in 1997, mm. that's when we had a peak mm. of what hyacinth. And the Lake Victoria uh, was had over 10,000 hectares of the weed. And all efforts were put in place to see that this weed is eradicated. We had even so many donors coming in, uh, USA, Egypt, uh, World, World Bank, UNDP, mm -hmm. uh, Netherlands. So many came in and we had a, uh, a collective effort, including also the ministries were united against the weight. But after 1990s, after some time, actually the fight was mainly left with the Ministry of Agriculture. Most ministries relaxed, organizations uh, relaxed. Uh, apart from maybe talking about it, there was no tangible effort being done. It was left to the Ministry of Agriculture and the Lake Victoria Environment Management Program, LAVEM. And uh, we did, we have been trying and struggling. And now the weeds are coming back again from where they were. Unfortunately, Kenya is suffering much. And of course, with the other countries. But Uganda was a bit fortunate that uh, the Egyptian government persisted in their assistance and a lot of what a lot of they we used mechanical control which is different from the other countries so a lot of the wheat was uh, was removed especially at the Kagera river where it enters lake victoria we stationed there a take out elevator and uh, about eight hours a day the wheat was being removed of course, leaving the other 16 hours whereby the weed continued going to the lake. Mm. Yeah.